And welcome to the finale of my review on the Tyranny of Dragons uh, campaign. Uh, the last video was about the rise of Tiamat uh, adventure itself, and this video is going to be all about the, the campaign in general. So we'll start off by saying that I like the story, I think it's a good campaign, but I want to address some of the, uh, the negative and positive points that have been made so far. So, starting with Horde of the Dragon Queen, the adventure starts off uh, making a lot of assumptions that the players are going to engage in certain courses of action. Um, it assumes that, you know, for whatever reason they're going to be in, uh, in Greenest when the attack starts, that they're going to, you know, engage in the different, uh, different events there during that attack, that they're going to go to the camp, try to rescue one of the, uh, one of the NPCs. So it makes a few assumptions to begin with. A lot of people didn't like that, or they thought it was too linear or even boring, which I can understand. But a big part of this is that, you know, it's a new edition and it's going to be somebody's first. This campaign is going to be somebody's first. So for newer players and newer DMs, it's good to start off with a more linear story that that way they can just, you know, go through the motions, start up, you know, as it's, you know, written directly. And then as the campaign progresses, they'll get a little bit more comfortable and they may have more options available to them. Uh, there is one section that I really like in this where it's a two month journey from Baldur's Gate to Waterdeep. And it gives a lot of time to, to role play. And I think by then the players will be more comfortable in that. Uh, the Rise of Tiamat itself is the adventure is the ultimate climax of the campaign. And this one is a lot more open-ended, a lot more, uh, a lot less structured, I should say. So you can take events out of order, you can add events in. There's a lot that you can really do with this to kind of customize it. And the final encounter is one that has the potential to be very, very epic with, with Tiamat herself. Um, one of the things that I do like about this is that the campaign doesn't go all the way to 20th level. I touched on that earlier, and the reason that I like that is the possibility of defeat at the hands of Tiamat is pretty strong. Not guaranteed, but it is likely enough that not having it go all the way to 20th level really gives the DM the option to create their own story, uh, their own series of events that will take place if the players fail to stop Tiamat on this attempt. So I already actually have some plans in place and it's a way of, the, you know, they'll go from 15th all the way to 20th level before they try fighting Tiamat again. The downside is that she would be at full strength, so anything they did to weaken her initially will not be in effect when they fight her this time around. I like the uh, the way that the attacks are structured later on when the players start to really catch the notice of the cult, so it really acknowledges the player character's uh, impact. Uh, the first one starts off pretty minor, somewhat disorganized, and the second one's a lot more serious. If it gets to a third one, then the third one is absolutely brutal and almost a deadly encounter. Uh, I do like that they, you know, say don't pull at any stops. At the same time, though, um, it recommends that if the player characters, if any of them die, or if they all die, then they can be raised by some of the more powerful allies that they have, which is fine. It was actually how I planned on handling the events if the player characters wiped in the fight against Tiamat in the first place. But it's something that you want to avoid doing too much. Um, it's possible that the second encounter, when the, uh, the Cult of the Dragon decides to directly attack the player characters, it's possible that that one will be deadly enough that the, uh, the player characters will end up being completely wiped out. So they'll need to be resurrected. Um, and if they end up having, or if they draw enough attention for the third encounter, they may die in that too. And it still recommends to resurrect them. So they could get resurrected too many times to the point where they don't really feel a sense of, you know, defeat. Like, you know, it's just a temporary thing. If anything, them being killed will make it look like, you know, they're no longer a threat so they can act without the, the cult really taking notice for a bit. So it's something that it's going to be a, definitely a delicate line. You, you want to prevent yourself from having to use that resurrection card too much. <clears throat> uh, I think what I would probably end up doing is if they got a TPK or if all the player characters were knocked unconscious, I might have them captured by the cult and then create a little scenario where they get to escape. Just something to prevent me from using resurrection too much if it comes down to it. The only thing other than that that I can really say is the cost of both of these books. 
they're in Canada they're thirty five dollars a piece and you get uh, you get less than two hundred pages for that now there's some online supplements you can download for free that help you with this so with some monster stats and some magic items so really all you def all you need for this campaign would be you know the two books a set of dice and the downloaded free PDFs. so from that perspective it you know the cost isn't that bad uh, it, reading through these, it reminds me a lot of the Pezo campaign paths, like Shackled City, for example. And they released a hardcover book for this uh, a few years back. I think it was in 2005 that they released this. Uh, really enjoyed this. I ran this uh, this campaign. It was uh, it was fantastic, but you know the price was it was ninety dollars. So ninety dollars for this book, which is over 400 pages long, and it came with. Uh, a map booklet which had all the different maps throughout the campaign as well as a double-sided poster map that came in the book as well so one side showed the city as it was at the beginning of the campaign and then there's an event that actually causes quite a bit of damage to the city and the second side shows that so it shows you know the, the city how it looks after both of those events so this was a worthwhile purchase. Uh, this was $90 versus $70, over twice the pages. Uh, maps, you know, fold out maps, map booklets, you know, a lot of bonus things that went with it. Uh, this felt expensive at the time, but compared, I guess you get a little bit more bang for your buck. But, you know, this isn't really necessarily that bad. It's cheaper if you live in the States, and you can also order them online, which I did, and it only cost a little over $20. Uh, for the books, so this full campaign is only going to cost me, you know, less than fifty, which is which is not bad for for what you get. Uh, I think that the story is great. I think it's going to be easy enough for new players to get into and new DMs to run, and then it gets kind of more involved to the point where you know as you progress, you get more comfortable and you can kind of uh, go a bit more into the role playing territory, which this focuses a lot on. There's a lot of dungeon crawls in this too. It's not devoid of that. But there's a lot more uh, role-playing elements, a lot more uh, planning and strategy involved in this one, which I really like. And of course, you know, cost is relative. So you get these two books, you know, you could have a year's worth of gaming, you know, or more, depending on how long it takes you to get through it. So for $70, you get all that. Versus, let's just say you buy, you know, a brand new video game. This was $69.99, and, you know, you might get... 10 to 12 hours of gameplay out of it, maybe a little bit more if you decide to buy the DLC. But, you know, video games, you get a lot less for, you know, a more price or at least a similar comparable price versus what you'll get with this. And you'll have, you know, different groups if you know different people that game, and you can all have different stories to tell. So, uh, overall, I really enjoy this campaign uh, as, as much as it may feel, you know, linear and scripted. It's a pre-written adventure, so if you're buying it, I don't know what else you'd really expect, but, you know, a more linear series of events to get you from the beginning, from point A to the ultimate uh, goal, which is point B. So, you know, there's only so much that it can really take into consideration and account for. The rest is really up to you, and if you're, you know, a veteran DM, seasoned DM, you probably won't have any issues uh, expanding upon this and really making it your own, uh, your own campaign. But if you're new, it's structured enough that you'll be able to run it with relative ease. So this this gets a good recommendation from me. I like the uh, the Tyranny of Dragons. I thought it was a great campaign. Uh, really look forward to running it, and hopefully I'll get to do that all the way through. Uh, so yeah, pick this up if you get the chance. If you have the money, if you're looking to uh, get into D and D and you don't you know you're new to it, you don't really know how to you know run or design campaigns or adventures you may want to consider picking these up because you can't really go wrong for it. And uh, for the experienced players, again, you can probably expand it enough that uh, it's not going to feel like a pre-written adventure uh, if you have the time and energy to do that. My group uh, consists of mainly new players, so I don't mind running this uh, as written because I, I know that by the time they get to this section, they'll be comfortable enough with role-playing that this the sessions with the, you know, the councils and the different types of negotiations, they'll probably, you know, hopefully it will be uh, into that and good enough at role-playing at that point that they'll really enjoy those sections. 
the campaign has an epic feel as it should. Uh, I like the way that uh, Tiamat's stats are handled as a, as a god. Um, she's definitely the toughest monster I think that we've had in 5th edition so far. But it's not that bad that it's completely impossible for the players to win. It may be unlikely and it may be difficult, but it's not impossible. So that's, uh, that's, those are my thoughts on the Tyranny of Dragons campaign. Um, I think it's great. Go out and pick it up if you get the chance. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I'm going to get back into my videos on the different 5th uh, edition classes. And I think I'm just going to upload them as just the raw footage like I did with my Edition Wars video. Just to kind of get them out. Um, it's kind of difficult to get to the editing process. Uh, so I'm just going to upload those, hopefully in rapid succession, uh, just raw footage, so hopefully I won't sound too stammering or incoherent. Anyway, I'm going to cut it off here, so thank you very much for watching YouTube. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoyed the campaign.